I finally found the meaning of life, seated in Christ, like the waterfall on ice. Jesus, Jesus, yeah, let the neighborhood rise to that sound. Let's go here, because this is what the Lord wants. I know this is what the Lord wants, because I can feel it in my spirit super duper strongly. Let's go here. Ah, oh, that is beautiful. And I know the Lord wants me to go here. Okay, Jesus, whatever you want to do, Jesus, you have your way, Lord. All right. So yesterday, I, Mr. Matthew, just came off a heavy fast seeking the face of the Lord. And what happened? Did we experience God? Of course we experienced God. Did we touch the supernatural? Of course we touched the supernatural. Did we experience God's mercy, his intimacy, his love, his glory? Of course we did. Did we touch heaven? Did we open the gates? Of course we did. <laughs> Did we reach a new level in Christ? Of course we did. Did we intercede and pray and climb Jacob's ladder and went into a new realm of God? Of course we did. Okay. Now, I don't know. That was beautiful. Holy Spirit, take control of my body, my soul, my mind. I'm, I'm lost right now. Take control. Let's go back to that. That was beautiful. Look, look, look. Just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Look at my way, my father says, colder than glory. And that's what we call holy. Man, my savior, he really changed my story. Look at all his glory. You can taste it. You can taste the glory of the almighty. You can taste the splendor of Yahweh. You can taste the presence of the Prince of Peace. I was at my job all night and just every time I get off a of fast, there's an overflow of the manifestation of God's spirit. And I'm just telling I don't have an option to tell people about Jesus in this glory. I can't just sit there and just and people just we touching people. We tell them about Jesus. But more importantly, we showing them Jesus. You see, this glory is undeniable. I don't care if you worship the devil. I don't care if you're an atheist. I don't care if you're skeptical about the gospel. When this glory comes, when this manifestation takes place, it is undeniable. King Jesus, do I really get the rest of my life with you? Then I really get to live the rest of my life with you. And I really get to taste all my life with you. All right. I know you want to get to the meat, so do I. But if you ever rush in the presence of the Lord, you lack wisdom and revelation. But if you ever rush to get into the glory, you're in here. When you learn how to sit and just be, the righteousness of God, the son of the Lord. And you just sit in that state of being. You ain't never gonna have to do nothing. You ain't never gonna have to do nothing. 
Ah, yes. My precious king, my prized possession. So, I went to the restaurant, right? Right, right, right. I heard this voice. And this voice spoke to me and said, you don't really know the importance of this channel. He's talking about this, what we're doing now. And I saw the king seated on his throne. I'm looking, the open vision, I'm looking from this perspective and the vision. I see his back and he's looking at this channel. I see the last few previous videos that have been uploaded, right? But he begins to unfold it like a scroll, this channel. When he looked into the soul of this channel, glory, fire, and burning begin to emit from his eyes. Then he rolled it up. He grabbed it with his right hand. And the Lord put it close to his heart. And then I have another vision when I'm sitting down. I saw from that perspective, I'm sitting here, I'm looking into the soul of the viewer. This channel. The Lord says, I no longer want to reward you. I want to reward you. He's pointing at me and this and one. And then I see, I saw this measure in the spirit, right? I filled you with all this revelation, all this knowledge, all this glory, all this encounter, all this power, all the way out here. But you've only released this much. I'm not gonna force you. I'm not gonna make you, but it is mandatory it is required for you to feel this measure. And the Lord told me, if you want to go further in your destiny, you want all I got to offer right now, not 2000 years from now, not five years from now, not when you get this, not when you get that. Now you come here and you share my heart because little did you know when you pouring out your heart, I'm releasing my heart. Little did you know, every time you come here, I overflow with excitement. Little did you know, when you come here, I release more power, more glory, more breakthrough, more revelation than you'll ever know. Right? So anytime I get off a of fast, there's always an open window in heaven over my life of revelation of vision and i'm talking about i go eat i go to sleep i arise and i can't even just read my bible like i normally do before i go to work the revelation is pouring out so strong the visions are so real that i'm not just having visions he who is all vision spends time with me and it's so strong and revelation straight from the throne wave, straight, straight from the throne waves of heaven is coming upon me and activity and just and I just have my phone by myself and I'm just jotting everything down and just what everything Jesus is showing me in the supernatural visions that he's taking me in and just the power and the glory that just raining on me. And so I've learned to catch it and I'm holding on to this boy and it always it just it, and then there's an overflow of his spirit. So I'm like, okay, I'm learning connections in the spirit. I'm like, okay, I understand I get an overflow here. I understand that I have an open heaven here. Well, how can I use that to have an even greater overflow? How can I use that and cause that to extend into an 
open heaven? How can I find this extension? Okay, I know how to do this to get in this presence, to get in this glory, then it's power, but what can I do to extend it? So I learned about fasting. I learned about sounds and instrumentals and how that extends and activates and releases and causes forth endurance for me to go forward in the things of God and for it to manifest to a greater degree and for there to be an extension in the spirits. And I realized there was a grace for all extensions. So I'm like, okay. What can we do, Lord? Because the Lord has anointed this. The Lord has ordained this. Before the beginning of time, the Lord knew I was going to come here. The Lord knew this was going to be anointed. So there's a heavenly electricity upon this, right? And, um, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You know, for many times I'm thinking, this is lame. What am I doing? Yeah, I'm talking about Jesus, but I don't want to make videos. I'm not, what am I really getting anywhere? Is people really going to get touched? And, you know, Satan is really good at um, discouraging you. And the Lord was like, look, 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 look. What I've given you, the power I've given you, the revelation I've given you, the knowledge of my kingdom. This stuff will change lives. This stuff is going to redeem nations. This stuff is going to release me into the earth. This stuff is going to manifest me to set up my kingdom in realms and regions. You are going to touch millions of lives. Billions. You're going to touch the world with me. And so I'm just here. And this is the reward. This is the reward. This is the reward. Okay. I've been through wars in my walk with the Lord, I tell you. This journey with Jesus, man, I'm telling you, I done been through gargoyles. I done been through three-headed bats. I done had to go in the cave where Medusa was is, look her in the eyes. And melt her with this Holy Ghost. I done had to climb that mountain, face that dragon, behead that beast. Okay, I done had to. I done fallen, I done been crushed, I done been broken, but I have risen seven million times stronger in the name of Jesus than I ever have in my life. I cannot be defeated because I got the Holy Spirit. I got the Holy Spirit. And I cannot be defeated. I cannot be overtaken. I cannot be crushed. The love of God is only increased. I can only, I'm only increasing and understanding God's love. I'm only increasing and experiencing the supernatural. I'm only increasing and the mercy of God. And I'm being more immersed to a deeper, deeper. They ain't never went to the bottom of the ocean. I'm just going deeper in the ocean of his love and his glory and his mercy. And Satan can't throw a rod. He can't reel me out. He can't send a shark my way to eat me up. He can't send a, a school of fish to distract me. I'm just going deeper and I'm going deeper. And it feels, oh my gosh, the way Jesus makes me feel. People say, work, well, brother, you crazy. And I say, brother, I am crazy. For Jesus, the joy that Jesus gives me is so strong and so explosive. Ain't nothing funny. We're not watching Comedy Central. Nobody cracked a joke. Nothing's funny. We're only making minimum wage. We work at a job. We cook hamburgers all day. But brother, I'm in the glory. I'm in the Shekinah. I'm in the third heaven. I'm enthroned with my king. <laughs> That's where I'm at, baby. You might be in poverty. You might be broke, brother, but I'm not. My currency is everlasting. <laughs> There's no end to my kingdom. There's no lack where I sit. All power has been given to me in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. I never knew what life was until I met Jesus. The, the freedom I feel in my soul. I'm like, I'm like all the eagles, but the head eagle just flying and soaring through the wind, through the storm. <laughs> Nothing can weigh me down. No storm. We, we fly above the storm. In Jesus. Look, we just flying right now in the Lord. We flying in His glory. You know, you know, the way Jesus makes me feel, man, there ain't no money. There is no money. Ain't no money you ever gonna make in this life. I don't care. Ain't no money you ever gonna make. Ain't no mansion you ever gonna live in. Ain't no business you ever gonna run. That can give you even a spot.
speck of what the king of kings can give unto you. <laughs> I'm standing in this victory throughout an each and every century. Yeah, I'm dwelling in this splendor. This king is really real, child. He ain't no pretender. When the battle comes, look at my defender. Hmm. My champion ain't never lost a battle. He's undefeated in all eternity. My king don't never bow down. My king don't never back up. He rules and he reigns. I'm his child and he loves me. He treasures me. I'm the prize of his heart. I'm the center of his eye. We belong together. Let me tell you about Jesus. Brother, you ain't never gonna ride in no Maserati this fly. Brother, you ain't gonna never climb the mountain that's gonna take you this high. <laughs> Until you taste it for yourself, you're gonna be asking why. Hi. Yahweh. Until you know how to worship the king. Until you know how to worship the king, man. You don't know what glory is. You know what I'm saying? Where we at, Lord? Holy Spirit, take control. You own my heart. You have the rights to these gates. Ah, my soul. Take possession, Father. Take possession, Father. I don't belong to myself, Lord. I hate. I'm dead to myself, Lord. I belong to you, O Lord. <laughs> Satan can't rob our destiny. He can't steal what belongs to us. Now, we gonna shine forever. Let that coward know. He gonna sit in ashes. The lake of fire will be his throne. But we gonna sit with Christ. But we gonna rule and reign with Christ. Forever. And ever. We just gonna sit back. We gonna do our feel. We gonna sit back, cause you know what I'm saying. We gonna sit back. It's just the presence of God. The presence of God. Ah, I feel you in my soul. The steering wheel, feel that God is yours. Take control. Take control. Look, look, look. God don't make you do anything. He causes you. <laughs> you know what my father told me? The angel shredder is yours at your disposal to use whenever. If you ever want to feel God's love, truly feel it. Wherever you direct the word of God in your focus, it shall go and be established. If you ever really want to feel what God has said about you, you must speak the word to yourself. Every time I talk like this, God loves me. He cares about me. 
Oh, do I feel it? Oh, do I feel it? Let me tell you something. When you taste the love of this king, it'll make you give up on everything else in your life, your idols. You go throw them in the fire. When you taste the glory of this God, you gonna give all that witchcraft up in a heartbeat. So one glimpse of his glory, one touch from him. You'll never be the same. He shows up. When you stop talking, he does all the talking. The overall spectrum of the operation closes and another one opens. The gears of your operation and the Lord. See, we see that is our future. That is our end, what we're doing. But that is just a small salt of the next phase of glory. Cell of Clement. You know, there were many times in my life where I thought I'm not going to reach my destiny. I've sinned too many times. God's going to give my wife to something. <laughs> oh, I feel you. Thank you. But you know, you know what the Lord says? Nah. That's not possible around here. That won't take place on my time. As long as I live and dwell as king. You will receive everything that I promised you. And you will be mine forever. Your wife, she's yours. Don't even go that route. <laughs> you know, You know, trusting in the Lord is more of submission to God and who he is and his ability versus your ability to determine what's right and wrong. That's a mighty revelation there, my friend. You catch it, it will split the corridors of darkness from your mind. These revelations, friend, are swords from the throne of the Almighty, Yahweh. Yahweh. There is none as holy as my God. There is none that stands before my God and declares themselves to be king. He is the king over all. The entire kingdom of evil and darkness bows to the feet of my king. Look, 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 look. Because you went deep within you unlocked this experience. On this previous fast, there were two men of God and they had a message, a word that my father wanted me to partake upon. So the Holy Spirit led me there. Be first 
before this, I wouldn't really allow the Holy Spirit to lead me into wisdom. I would gain my own wisdom. And so because the Holy Spirit was not a participant, it became bland, confusing, and there was an unknown time. And you know, I've reached a level, I'm like, Lord, I'm watching these videos, um, but it doesn't feel as powerful like it used to. I'm not like, what's going on? And you know, the Lord spoke to me, dealt with me when I came off this fast real strong. He says, I want to deal with you personally. Oh, Jesus. He said, he said, mm. He said, I want to teach you personally, not just through another man of God, the prophets of God you love. I want to come to you personally. But until you are completely dependent on me, until you are completely hopeless without me, until you let go of every way, everything, and you are completely dependent on me, that ain't gonna take half. That ain't gonna happen the way I want it to happen. God wants you more than you could ever imagine. I don't care what you feel. This life is just so simple. When you boil it down, what is death? It's just a feeling, temporary pain, any sickness that will ever occur, any anything that will take place. It's just a temporary feeling. But this eternal, magnificent. Heavenly Father, He wants you so bad. He wants you so bad, He gave up His Son. And His own Son hung on a cross. That's how bad He wants you. He gave up everything. And all you have to do is say yes. I was sitting at a picnic table with Jesus. But I had to cross. Mm. I feel God so strong right now. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I, um, I just, it's so wonderful, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it so wonderful? Isn't it so wonderful? I, I'm obedient. I'm obedient. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I just look, 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 look. But I had to cross the bridge to get there. And there was this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ain't you real? Ain't you real? Okay. Um. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. All right, so. I had, there was this bridge and it was the bridge for the unfearful and that all there were people crossing this bridge and the Lord was telling them because you were not afraid because you were not fearful but you made me your my <laughs> but you made me your he was just complicated he was complimenting them and he was so excited and there was a bridge for the unfearful and he told me because you were not afraid Cross this bridge. I crossed the bridge with the one I was wedded to. And I just, I was sitting at this table with Jesus and he, he put his hands out like this. And then we, we grabbed his hands. But Jesus was there, but he was also right here and he took a picture of that moment. That moment was captured. Because we saw the invitation of the king accepted it and we entered so that was captured by the father forever I saw something amazing too I saw Jesus he was baptizing the one I was wedded to and this water I 
don't even know if I can go further on that one. Oh, this is amazing. I was very honest with the Lord on this last fast I went to. I was like, Lord, I just feel there's things I'm struggling with. And I, I just feel, and I start crying. I started crying. I started crying. And it touched God's heart. So strong. And anytime you touch God's heart, he moves from his throne. I just, I was like, Lord, I don't know. I was telling him, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I'm pushing people away. I feel like, you know what the Lord is like? He was like, Last night I had such a wonderful time with the Lord because he wasn't just giving me visions. He was actually in my room for an extended time, a period of time, and he was showing me things and he was talking to me. And spending time with Jesus like that, you'll never be the same. It will go beyond activating your DNA meditation. Throw that stuff away. What I encountered. I'll never be the same. He said, he said, he said I no longer, I, I no longer want you to seek the quotes of great men, but rather find the quotes of my heart in me. And then I saw this tomb and there were cobwebs, but I saw these two hands of Christ touch them and then life entered into that vessel, life entered into that, which was a tomb and it turned into a palace. And you know, the Lord told me, you know, a lot of times when Jesus speaks to you, it goes against your carnal mind. It goes against your reasoning. It goes against your ability and your logic. So you have to catch it in your heart and receive. He said, he said, he said, he said, that which was dead in a person's life comes alive to your reaction of this mercy. Quote, Jesus. My question, are you living your life within or without? The kingdom of heaven does not come with observation. The kingdom of heaven is within. When you learn to go within and spend, not minutes, but spend hours there. It will be the easiest thing in the world for you just to give up all your money, sell all that you have, give it all away because you have found that pearl. You have found that pearl. And this pearl, there is nothing on the face this earth that can compare to it. I 
Ah. Oh my goodness, I feel a new emotion I have never felt in my life. The zest of God. <laughs> I feel the potency of heaven like I've never felt it before. My king does not lie. He is not a man that he should lie. If he promised you something, he will make it happen. I don't care what your sin is. I don't care what your struggle is. I don't care what Satan did. If he promised, if he said he would make it happen, if he showed it to you, he will perform it. He won't lie. He don't lie. Jesus, when that intention is gone, it becomes my extension. Jesus, you are looking through the reflection of vision and not the reaction of my heart. Oh, yeah, that's good, man. That's good, Jesus. That's good, Holy Spirit. That's good, Holy Spirit. That's good. Look, you're going to like this one. You gonna tell him, you gonna tell him next time. After you go seek the face of the Lord on the mountain, the desert, wherever, holy tabernacle, you gonna say, I didn't just say, they gonna say, the Lord gave you a vision, you gonna be like, nah. The Lord was with me. He didn't just give me a vision. He was with me. But all that he was, was and is with me. You're going to release that revelation and the glory that comes from it. Everybody's going to be blown back in the spirit. A holy hurricane just swept him up into the spirit. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. I saw this white robe, the royal Holy Spirit. She was holding me. Tears fell from her eyes and went into my mind and poured out of my eyes. And showed me my tears are your tears. I just had these visions. I'm just praying for people, holding them through that embrace. God's cherishment for them is released through the tears that fall. They are touched. Man, I saw Jesus. I tell you I did. I saw Jesus. And so, and so. <laughs> Jesus. He was on this cliff. There were all these demons. And he was saying, he was telling these demons. He was telling these demons. If you want him, you got to go to me. Jesus is my gladiator. Jesus is my champion. He's my defender. He defends me. He loves me. He said, in the same way you protect my people, I will shield you in the spirit.
Jesus, he said, you will feel a new spirit of release as you share. Share your weaknesses and my strength shall be multiplied. <laughs> you know what's greater than this revelation? The revelator. You know what's greater than all of this power God will ever give us? The power holder. You know what's greater than all this success we will ever achieve? The giver of life. Father, you are my trophy. You are that diamond. You are that all in one perfect melody. I love you. Literally, we gotta keep going. We gotta keep going because Jesus wants us to keep going. His, his presence is thick up in here. See God's will from a general perspective. See Kobe Bryant. <laughs> thank you, Jesus, for not letting devils. Thank you for not letting Satan possess me. And thank you for helping me in lust and temptation. And just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Kobe Bryant. He can score shots all night. He can dominate on the court. But there's still rules and there's regulations that he has to follow. He must obey the laws of the court. It's the same thing with us in Christ. You know what the king told me? What he showed me? He said, in order to be full... Man, In order to be fully led, you must fully be dependent. A soldier is fully dependent on the general. The general will execute orders and it might go through the officer, it might go through the colonel. But that order that is executed, it must be followed. It's the same thing with us in Christ. Okay? Oh, this is good. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. I have such a love for people that I've never had before. My character is like it's never been before. It's so easy, no matter how intense the pressure is, no matter how many demons comes, it's so easy for me just to love people, just to be submissive to them. My character has grown. I am changed forever by this key. You're gonna like this here though. You're gonna like this. Let's, yeah, I don't wanna get carnal, but let's, from the divine, let's talk about something carnal. You know, I'm almost 30 years old. I don't really have a car right now. Am I gonna get married? I still live with my mother. Carnal, carnal, carnal. So the Lord is like, look, in reality, you almost, maybe you're almost 30 years old, but you truly were born. You truly were born when you first laid your life down to me. Oh. So in reality, you've really only been living for five years. Let's stop here for a moment because when I first gave my life to Jesus, and I'm not talking about, I've, I said the Lord's Prayer my whole life. I could feel God's presence. I knew that God had power. There was so much respect that people had for me. There was so much leader. There was so much. Okay, he was with me the whole time, but, but 
Do you have any clue how powerful your testimony is? I'm not just talking about when Jesus delivered you from drugs. I'm talking about your everyday testimony. Do you know what it does to the King of Glory? Do you know how God has released through your testimony to touch it and lavish his people? You know how excited the Father becomes when you testify. But look, look, this. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, all right, brother, you need some water? No. I just need you to shut the door behind you and let me sink in my father's glory. Let me drown in it. No, I don't need any floaties. No, I don't need to call a cab. No, I don't need my wallet. I'm right where I need to be. In your glory. I find my essence, my life is hidden in your presence. Let's keep going. He does so, 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 oh, so, 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 so great. Is of glory of my God. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. Oh, he's rewarding us right now. He's rewarding. He is rewarding us right now. I promise. I promise. I promise. I promise. I don't like to promise because I fear the Lord, but I promise. So, when I first had a supernatural experience that I was able to discern or that I was fully aware of, there was this evil spirit in my aunt's house and I had the whole mansion to myself. I was listening to music and I immediately stopped what I was doing and I looked and I knew there was something evil in my house. I literally felt light shoot through. I literally felt the gates of my mind open, my belly, and I felt this evil. So evil. I even took a picture. And later when I watched the video, you could see a seven foot evil spirit, not just a dark shadow, fully in form and manifested. I showed my family, I showed everybody. They all freaked out. Even the atheists couldn't deny it from his head to his feet. And I remember my mother always taught me, anytime there's a demon, you just say the blood of Jesus. That's all I remember her teaching me. So I used that in my moment. I just kept saying the blood, and I kept, I was blowing at the demon. I didn't know how to fight. <laughs> I love you, Jesus. I didn't know how to fight demons, so I just kept blowing at the evil spirit. And I, I saw him, he walked up the stairs. I even heard his footsteps. And I just kept saying the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and I kept, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> How you doing over there? <laughs> Man, I be feeling the Holy Ghost so strong at my job. And even though people think I'm crazy, they can't deny. <laughs> this love will make you go crazy. This mercy will make you go crazy. This presence will turn the most hard rock killer gangster thug. I got tattoos. I thought I was a gangster. I spent half of my life locked up. I thought I was tough. And when I felt when I felt the love of this God, I turned into a whip. I turned into a little lamb. I turned into a ba when I experienced this love. Oh, I fell in love and I just turned into, I went from being the hardest gangster on the block to the most softest, gentle lamb in the, in the manger. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Jesus. I miss you. I, mean, I, I, um, I'm on this last, I feel like a little kid right now. 
Me and Jesus are playing toys together right now, right, right. But on this last fast I went to, he just said, something broke in me. I have a greater dependency on Jesus, but I have a greater adoration for Adonai. A reverence. Now I now when I think about Jesus, I'm not Jesus, hallelujah. You know, I'm like, my darling Jesus. My pr ooh. And the Holy Spirit gave that to me. I want you to know something. If whoever's watching, when whatever Satan tries to do, it only is making you stronger. Everything the devil does to you. you no, know, it doesn't feel good. Whether you're falling or not, whether you're struggling with something, it's only making you stronger. And it's only bringing you closer to God. I promise. You're not devoted. You can't. You can't and you're not devoted to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is your devotion. You don't and you can't serve God. The Holy... Okay, so I'm finding this demon, right? It was so evil and I just sat outside for four hours. But that same night, I felt this presence coming and I got scared. I thought it was that evil spirit again. That evil spirit went to my friend's house. He invited him over there. This was five years ago and someone got sick in his home and they had to call the hospital. But uh, this time it was the Holy Spirit. I thought it was that evil spirit. This time it was the Holy Spirit coming upon me. The Holy Spirit is the most... The Holy Spirit's not this old evil... No, the Holy Spirit is so gentle. Almost invisible, so peaceful. The Holy Spirit is so pure that it's almost like the Holy Spirit's invisible. So pure that... I don't know. I don't know. So I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. It was the first time I really encountered the Holy Spirit. And I just kept, I was sitting on the couch and I just kept saying, I'm sorry the house is dirty. 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ is so beautiful. How long do you want to go, Lord? Because you're, you're, oh, okay. I just, uh, you know, I just, so, uh, yeah. And from that moment forward, Jesus, I was his. When I cried, I remember when I was fighting that evil spirit too, that was the first time in my life I cried out to Jesus. I believed in Jesus, but I never called upon him. I never really cried out to him. I cried out to Jesus. And from that moment forward, he was so excited. He was insanely excited. He was so excited because I wanted to be his. And from that moment forward, I was born. I was alive. I was free. If you have all the power, but never experience the love, you're a failure. Sorry, it's the truth. They had all the power, did wonderful things with the power of God, but they stood before the king. You know what the king said? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. When you fall in love with the majesty, when you crumble and crawl to his feet because you want him more than you want anything else, you will become known. The Father won't just know you, but you will be known. <laughs> and so, 
in this house I had so many supernatural encounters. I had a satanic attack where Satan came to my house. He sent rats all over the house. I remember I was going to open the drawer and there were three rats standing there and looked me dead in my eyes. As long as I've been on the face of this earth, I have never been that afraid, experienced that much fear. And he loved it. There was this rat hanging upside down in my vent. Satan was hiding behind that through voodoo, through witchcraft. The stove in the kitchen was on. I couldn't turn it off. It was on for three days. Demons took pictures. They put nails in the wall. There were nails all over the house. There were blankets moved. When I went to the backyard, there was a halfway built cross. There was a death on my life. They issued, initiated to kill me. A satanic hit. <sighs> Jesus. I remember my brother came over. We went into the room where the devil was. There was this white table leg I've never seen in my life. It was just there. There was this Bible. It was just there out of nowhere. My brother got possessed by the Holy Spirit. He went straight to the Bible. He picked up the rod. He took out, he took off the rat and he emptied out the vent. And behind it, you could clearly see the face of Satan. It looked like Freddy Cougar. I took a picture of this, showed everybody, and this wasn't no dark shadow. You could fully see his face, his wrinkles, his charcoal darkness, burnt ash darkness, looked like Freddy Krueger. Evil. He disappeared off the vent. My brother said, let's go upstairs. We went upstairs and he went to a, he transformed to a bigger image. He looked like the Grim Reaper on steroids, much bigger. My brother put down seven diamonds representing the seven seals of God, a key. And I saw the devil started shrinking. And the word of God popped up. It said, behold, I've given you the power of the enemy. And this all came upon me. And that moment I realized I had power over Satan. Let me tell you about another supernatural encounter. I've had millions of them. I'm watching this video, right? Oh, Jesus, I feel God. Stop. No, no, no. Angels, you can come in. You can come in. Oh, my gosh. Um, so I'm watching this video, right? So, mm. I reverence you, I reverence you, I reverence you, I reverence you, you know this moment is yours, you can have this little life, I'll be your wife. I want you to be attracted to me. I want to be your type. <laughs> right, so I'm watching this video, right? This guy is talking about this satanic agent, how he got saved, but he was talking about in the spirit realm. He was talking about how Satan hates intercessors. He was talking about three types of prayer. When you begin to pray, it turns into a smoke. But then it turns into a fire. But then the third phase, it turns into a liquid fire. When you reach the third phase in your intercession, the fire is so hot, angels and demons cannot touch this fire. And he was talking about a spiritual rock in the spirit realm. He says, what this fire does for the intercessors of God, it melts through this rock and it opens up the gates of heaven. He said, people that walk under these heavens, oh, Jesus, people that walk under these open heavens, when they walk through the neighborhood, everybody gets saved. Demons melt. They don't even have to do nothing. Just by them walking, people get delivered. 
He said, Satan hates these kind of people. And what they do when they begin interceding, they detect it from the second heaven. And they, their job is to get you out of prayer. Get him out of prayer. Distract him. One time I was doing that. See, when I intercede, oh God, it's powerful. I've had many satanic agents that would come to me as I would intercede. We'll talk about that in a I feel God's presence. Like it's so thick, it's so strong, it's so real, it's so, it's like I can taste it. Okay, so let's keep going. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, keep going, please. Okay, um, God is laughing, he's happy, he's excited. So, he was saying that, right? And I, and he was saying that. And um, after I watched the video, the pastor was saying he did not believe what this man was saying. The guy would astral travel, astral project, and he landed in a church and they prayed him down and he got delivered, gave his life to Jesus. All these demons came out of him. But I remember and this is amazing. But at the end of the video, the pastor was saying, I could not believe what this man was telling me. I had to go on a 10 day fast and seek the Lord. And I said, Lord, I don't need to go on a 10 day fast. I believe ev this is powerful. I believe everything that just said. I know that what he was saying was real. Boom. Guess what happened? I immediately experienced it for myself that day. There's something when you just believe that God can do impossible things. There's something when you just simply don't have to figure it out, don't have to go on a hundred million day, just believe. It unlocks that. So, so I went outside, right? Me and my friends started walking together. Oh, that was supernatural. We're going to the quarters, corner store to buy cigarettes. But I said, but I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think the Holy Spirit just took over everything. I didn't know what was going to happen. And so I just started praying. I'm, I'm praying, but I'm praying with energy and I'm praying intensely. And this was, this was five years ago. And I'm praying with my mind and I'm praying with my heart and just magnetic, energetic, powerful prayers. Just, and I'm just like bobbing my head. You could would literally think I'm on crack and drugs. I felt it like I never felt it. And we're walking and we just keep walking. But then the spirit takes over me and I start running. Like I start walking fast and my brother's like, where are you going? I start walking fast, but I'm praying with my walk and my movement and the spirit and my speed and I'm praying and I, I start feeling something. I don't know what's going on. I walk in the corner store and I'm silenced, but I'm in heaven. Get the pack of cigarettes. Then I'm walking with my friend, but I start running. I start running home, running. And then I'm walking, but I'm praying while I'm running. Somebody stopped in their car. They looked at me. They said, stop smoking crack. Because I'm praying with, I don't know, like I'm praying, but it's so powerful and it's so fiery and it's so fiery. And I just said, God bless you. And I prayed all the way home. And I'm sitting there on the couch. My brother finally shows up and I'm talking about the, what I just read from the video I watched. And he, my brother was doing this while I was talking. He's like, the vocal cords of God are coming from you. And then my brother left. And I'm listening to this song. It's called Anima, the sixth son. This woman sounds like an angel. I'm, I'm listening to the song. But then I begin to hear angels sing. It was so beautiful and powerful. I didn't get on my knees and worship. I fell to my face and began weeping. I heard angels singing to God. It wasn't, I didn't just get on my knees. Oh, that's beautiful. No, I f immediately fell to my face and began weeping. I went outside. I looked into this open heaven and there was this circle into the heavens. Ooh. And I looked at it and I started walking this way. And everywhere I walked, this circle followed me. This big giant cloud came to me. It was so supernatural. But this is all five years ago. What I've experienced in the past, man.
then you're not going to believe this. I have a gift with pictures, so I can look at a picture and decipher it. I'm sitting on the couch at my cousin's house. Oh, my God, this is so supernatural. I'm talking about... Mm. Man, Jesus. Um, I'm sitting on my, my aunt's couch. I feel like Angel Pokey or Pokey who died. I was feeling her by the window. I don't know what's going on. So I took a picture of the window. I look at the picture. I begin to zoom into the picture. One of the ants that live with me, she's dead. She's in heaven now. I look at the picture. I see her sitting on in the picture. I saw how she got saved and I saw how she went to heaven through the picture. I'm looking at the picture. I see her sitting on that chair at that house on a Zura sky. I saw when she, because before she died, she said she was seeing demons and angels in her sleep. That's what she told us before she died. She was seeing demons and angels in her sleep. She was sitting on this couch, but she said she got saved. She let us know she got saved and then she passed away. She was sitting on the couch. She was watching Jan and Paul Crouch, that lady with the pink hair. That's when she first gave her life to Christ before she died. She was watching. I saw on the TV, I saw Jan Crouch, that lady with the pink hair. I saw the remote. But then I saw upstairs where she died at. My cousin was wearing, my cousin was there. She was in the deathbed and I was seeing demons and angels too in this picture. I saw my angel or I saw my cousin in camouflage pants. I saw exactly how she was dressed and everything. And I used to ask her, I asked her, did you used to dress in camouflage, uh, camouflage pants? She was like, yeah, I saw her there. She had angels around her. But this is what I saw in heaven. I, as I continued to advance and look in the picture, I saw my aunt, the angels. I saw her arrive to this place in heaven. There was this water crossing. She was standing here. There was this water crossing. It was the river of life. There was an angel sitting down on these stairs awaiting her arrival. And this picture was like a picture that you've seen. I, I don't know for who painted this picture. But I, there were stairways going up. There was a massive waterfall. Oh. And the glory of God covered this. And I fell on my face and began worshiping God when I saw this. Okay, but those three months when I first gave my life, they were so supernatural that even a year, two years, three years later, I was like, God, is there ever, can you ever give me a season like that again? And the Lord said, the reason why I was like that because it was, you were in supernatural excitement of me. I was so excited. I've been waiting. See, even before I gave my life to Jesus, he was working on the background. And he said, son, all you have to do is reflect when you first got saved. There are many keys, there's many things, just reflect. And you will experience greater than that. And let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Please, Jesus. I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop, Jesus. Realizing potency. Unlocking potency from Master's hand. I was feeling an unknown emotion. And now I have a new emotional pleasure from Yahweh, my father. Dependency equals 
in tune with the spirit, which equals intimacy with the relational father. God and the answer are right here, right now. When you want to talk to your wife, your father, do you run to the backyard? Do you focus and drive to the corner store? No. You go directly to her, to him. And the answer there's nowhere else but within them. The same thing with the Father. We look for the answers in the wrong place. The answer is here. Now. If you're elevated without being purified, you will be a totem pole demonic statue. Let me say that again, because I need to hear that. If you're elevated without being purif purified, you're a totem pole. This is what the Lord told me. In order for you to go further in your destiny, you got to come here to this channel. Your speed, acceleration, destiny, your increase, it's in a location. It's all in the location. The location is here. Attitudes are altitudes in the spirit. In realms where either God enters or Satan enters. Inviting the Holy Spirit into the flow. Learning how to crown your words. A new spirit of refreshment. Promoting different aspects of God, like health, comfortability, peace, gives you a new promotion. Whatever represents God, he has the right to be there. Whatever represents the devil, he has the right to be there. You got video games that glorify murder, death, sexuality. He has the right to dwell there. Get that stuff out your house. I need to hear this over and over again. We're so worried about what Satan does. And how he's going to stop our destiny. Because of this, this, that. I did this, blah, 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 blah. Versus God's blessing and deliverance launching us into our destiny. If I cry, the rapture's got to come. So many things have broken off me in the past. What you find within will manifest outwardly. Now this is a deep, deep, deep revelation. If you're full of religion, I command it to leave you because you won't catch this. If you catch this, if you receive this, you will never, I mean never, be the same. In the power, God reigns upon you. In the intimacy, God is submissive to you. Don't drown in it. Just drink it. Now. 
Mission complete there. Well, Heavenly Father, in closing, I just adore you. You have been so faithful to me. You have loved me with an everlasting love. Nothing can stop this. You shined upon me and I didn't want anything else. You gave me freedom I never knew before. You have given me a hope and an assurance. You paid the price. You've laid out the pavement and the pathway. Now let's, let's go to one more real quick and we're gonna worship the Lord. And I'm gonna go home. I gotta go home. My mother needs me. My wife needs me. My children needs me. The body of Christ needs me. People need me. I have to go home. 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 Let's do one more though. I'll never leave you. I'll be here. Let's do one more. Let's go because it. Yes. And you know that's one of my favorite scriptures. He is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. All right, let's go here. Let's go here. You can go there, but I want you to go here, Mateo. Let's worship Jesus. good computer you know this computer is an expensive boy it does 4k 8k powerful and it, i have used every i have used it to glorify jesus well my technology worships god man jesus you always put me in the mold you're the king. <laughs> I serve no other gods. I don't care if they got a steak looking nice and juicy. I don't want that. My king, I won't shoot. I don't care if them devils got a cup full of nice, eloquent wine. I don't drink that. The only cup I sit from is seated at the table of the Lord um, Jesus Lord I love you O oh, King of Kings I adore you O oh, God of Heaven I release my heart to you you have faithfully proved me tried me, kept me, lifted me up. I just am so grateful. I say you're holy. Lord, I'm just in the wind, just flying. And your arms are wrapped around me. You treasure me. I'm just wrapped in the blanket of your glory, like a little newborn child. And I just look into your beautiful eyes and I smile, I smile. I'm yours, Father, I'm yours. Take me, have me, I'm yours. And you know what? You are mine. Oh, I love you. I've never felt this so much love. I've never felt this kind of love. I never felt this type of love. Until I met you. I never seen beauty. Until I laid my eyes upon you. Jesus name Amen
the Almighty is crowning you.